Hi everybody, welcome to Terry TV. I'm Terry Harden, Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer. I've been in films like Ghostbusters and Men in Black. I've built, uh, I've been in Country Bears, Captain Neo, etc., etc., etc. Welcome. This is Terry TV. How are you today? It's Friday. Um, and I know some of you were maybe wondering where I was. I had a little bit of a challenge, uh, challenge averted. So everything good. And uh, also I do a morning talk with my patrons. Um, yes, I have a Patreon page. So uh, good morning. Good morning. I thought it would be a good idea. It's going to help me and I hope it helps you to kind of go through some of these movies. Do you like the Academy Awards? Please post in the comments if it's something that you like. And if you don't like it, um, you know what to do. Change the channel. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I'm not telling you to change the channel, but if you get bored with talking about the Academy Awards, don't sit and suffer because uh, I'm going to be talking about nominations today. Uh, one of the things as an actress and a international uh, puppeteer is that um, I'm a member of the Screen Actors Guild. And uh, the Screen Actors Guild has their annual celebration of actors on uh, the 24th of this month. That would be February. So a week from, was it a week? No, a couple weeks from, a couple weeks from tomorrow, like two weeks from tomorrow. So I have to get on it uh, in the next uh, uh, couple weeks here and vote. So um, as some of you know, a lot going on in my life right now. Tomorrow's my dad's celebration of life. And I am finding that doing my homework for the Screen Actors Guild has been very, 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 very therapeutic. So I thought today I'd, I'd, I'd share it with you. Those of you who watch the SAG Awards, Screen Actors Guild Awards, those of you who watch the Screen Actors Guild Awards because it kind of gives you an idea of what may be winning for the Academy Awards, those of you who watch the Academy Awards have Academy Awards parties and stuff like that, I just thought that I would let you know about these films. If you're someone who would like to see some of these films, you don't spend a lot of time seeing films or you don't spend a lot of time, in the case of the Screen Actors Guild, watching streaming television, then this might help you to pick some things that you would be interested in, could be interested in. I'm not saying you will be interested in them, but you could be interested in them. One of the categories that I love that the Screen Actors Guild does is uh, stunts. Stunt people um, are uh, people who, uh, I was actually married to a stunt man, and uh, he, t he, he would terrify me every time. <laughs> the things that stunt men love and women, stunt men and women love to do, I, you know, uh, stunt people, I guess, is what it is now. Uh, they, 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 they boggle the mind that they love that adrenaline and uh, they've made it their job. So um, in that category, you've got uh, Ahsoka, Barry, Beef, Last of Us. Am I right? No. Yes. Ahsoka, Barry, Beef, Last of Us, and Mandalorian. And then you also have Outstanding Performances in a Motion Picture. Motion Picture Stunts. The nominees are Barbie, Guardians of the Galaxy, Indiana Jones, John Wick, Mission Impossible, uh, Dead Reckoning. I have to tell you that Every single film. If you're someone who likes action, this is where I would start. I would start with this group of films. And uh, don't miss, you probably haven't missed Mission Impossible with Tom Cruise or the John Wick films with Keanu Reeves. These two, I feel, come forward in the motion picture thing. I think that if you've seen them and, and, and post in the comments, if you disagree, but these, like if you're trying to go through films that have action and you're trying to pick like, let's pick the two, I highly recommend these two. Um, these two have so much uh, tight action that I have to tell you that they spoil me for some of the other films. So Ahsoka was not a film that I like. Uh, it's a series on um, Disney Plus. It's the latest in the Star Wars genre. And I found it to be too talky. And I found it to be uh, the action was slow. And this could 
you know, honestly, the action felt like it was at the level of the performers. They they just didn't really, you know, zoom. And in John Wick and in um, the mission, the new Mission Impossible, uh, I had to remember to breathe. And John Wick, this is John Wick four guys. So I was very impressed with both of those. And I think these are the ones that if you really are feeling like an action movie you want to watch, because the Academy doesn't necessarily acknowledge stunt people. But this one, if you just want to see some good action films that will take your breath away, John Wick 4 and uh, Mission Impossible are the two that I would suggest. Now, best pictures, I've seen them all. Seen every single one, so let's just talk about that for a minute, all right? Best Picture nominations, and we're going to kind of put the Screen Actors Guild aside for a while and talk Academy, because uh, although I know a lot of you watch the Screen Actors Guild Awards, and I hope you will, because I will, being a member, but I also uh, like to see the similarities, but there are some that I think are very, very interesting, and I wanted to point them out for you. So that if you're trying to figure out, if you're someone who's not seen a movie, you probably have seen Oppenheimer and Barbie. And the reason you probably saw these is because of Barbieheimer, um, where you were watching that double feature where I think you started with Oppenheimer. You're going to have to tell me. You started with Oppenheimer, but you ended with Barbie. Um, I'm not sure if that's the case, but anyway, that's the deal. And, um, and, uh, uh, so you probably saw Barbie and you probably saw Oppenheimer. Now, both of those are very, very good films and I feel they're not to be missed. So, um, maybe you want to start with those two. One of the things that I think, um, um, yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I've got the dinging happening because I've got my mom in the convalescent hospital. So uh, not that it's anything that's scary. It's just that yesterday I had an incident and I had to go take care of it. So done. Uh, but anyway, back to uh, the movies. Um, Barbie is a fun, uplifting film. And uh, I think you've heard me before say that I thought that its director should have been nominated. I still feel that way. Uh, I think Barbie is, is fantastic, amazing uh, a really wonderful film. And if you haven't already seen it, I think it is definitely a movie you should see, as is Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer is a longer film, and uh, uh, but I think it's a big contender. Many people are saying this could take the win. Uh, I'm not sure about that. The Academy is an interesting group of cats, meaning that some people think they're kind of uh, stiff, you know, stick up their back, stiff, not flexible. And yet last year, Everything Everywhere All at Once was the big winner. And so that movie is crazy. And so that movie is so wild. Great people in it. And uh, the Academy gave it the win. You know, prior to that, I think they gave the win to... Uh, see, it's in my... It, the picture's in my mind. But the, anyway, two years of a film that we weren't ready for it for the for the academy to give it the win usually if you're thinking about the academy being stiff shirts people you're you're used to them giving awards to things that are more musical based or more um i don't know a little more sometimes they're angst movies so maybe it would be uh uh, Life is Beautiful, which won, I don't think it won the, the big award, but it did win because it really had the Academy going. So what I'm finding is there's a more of an eclectic group with the Academy. So all bets are off as far as I'm concerned as to which will get best picture. And this year it's going to be a challenge because there are some pictures in there that are really gripping and really get you. One of them is Zone of Interest, which is a foreign film. And Zone of Interest will, uh, I, I don't know how you'll feel about it, but it really blew me away. And, and the reason Zone of Interest blew me away is because it doesn't spell everything out for you. Do you know how when you're watching a movie and there's two guys and one guy or girl or whatever, one person, two people, 
and one person is standing there and maybe he's the one that is going to uh, do something to the other person. Either they're going to shoot them or they're going to hit them or whatever, or they're going to drop a, 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 a shocking uh, piece of information on them. But before they do, they monologue. This is what I say. I call it monologuing, where they sit and they monologue. Okay, they got the gun and they start to talk. The person, our hero, tied up, and the guy monologues. He sits there and tells you why and tells you what he's going to do and gives you the whole plan. And you as the viewer, we as the viewer are not stupid, are we? We know that this is the hero of the movie and we know that this he's going to get out of it. Very rarely do we see the hero of the movie um, die. So it is our uh, experience as moviegoers that this person's going to get out of it. And you kind of, I don't know how you feel, but you get a little tired of the person who's going to get them monologuing. All right. So in zone of interest, there is none of that. There is none of that monologuing. There is none of that. In fact, you really have to watch it, watch it. And you really have to listen to understand what's really going on in this film. I had to watch it twice because the first time I will admit to you, I was confused. There were things I wasn't fully understanding the impact of. And then I watched it the second time and went, oh my goodness. I mean, there's things that are obvious to you. And if you're super smart, um, it may be all obvious to you. And if it is, I'd love to have a chat with you because it really got to me. I'm going to say it really, really got to me. And um, um, that movie... I love sound in a film. I love when when a movie filmmaker does not just think of sound, doesn't dismiss sound as something you paste on later. Sound is very, very effective. And uh, when I when sound is done well, it really, it hits you, doesn't it? I mean, if you listen to music to be calm or to get out of a funk or to feel uh, to feel a certain emotion, that's sound, right? And sound is something that should be taken very, very seriously. And sometimes there's movies that I don't think take it seriously. Uh, a movie that comes to mind is um, Lady Hawk. I love the film. Um, Rutger Hauer and Michelle Pfeiffer. Beautiful, beautiful, fun fantasy film. Something that gets to me. I love these kind of movies. And yet the soundtrack is appalling. It is just the worst soundtrack ever. I don't know if they had a friend, you know, maybe that was a buddy who got to do the music, but it's it's pasted on. It has nothing to do with the motivation to help the film. You know, it doesn't help you get more into the film. It actually, in many cases, pulls you out of it. So sound is very important and zone of interest. I vote for the Academy Award for Best Sound. I just was completely moved by zone of interest. So if you can see it, it's mostly in theaters. You cannot stream it yet, but it is a movie that I think is not to be missed. And so, um, and I've seen every, every film. Okay. And I've not just seen best picture. I've seen best actor, best actress. Uh, I've seen a lot of the documentaries, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but I just am trying to help you sort of get through this Rolodex of films. So you can kind of decide for yourself what movies you want to see. Uh, first, you might be very, very busy. I am in a current situation, which I won't go into, that allowed me to do my homework, which was to watch these films for the Screen Actors Guild, because many are parallel, aren't they? Many are overlaid. Many of the SAGs are also in the Academy. So there you go. Killers of a Flower Moon, you may be asking about. Martin Scorsese's latest film. Uh, yeah, that movie, I think, would have been more uh, it would have had more impact. Please understand this is in my opinion. And understand I am talking about the film, not you. Okay, I have to say this because sometimes people take offense when I don't necessarily love a movie that they do. And it's not saying that I don't like you. It's saying that the movie didn't resonate with me. I'm not about to say this about Killers of the Flower Moon. I actually liked Killers of the Flower Moon. I didn't love Killers of the Flower Moon, because I felt that it was way too long. And I think that the length of it was 
actually disarmed the message. Okay, there's a very strong, important message in Clear Killers of the Flower Moon. And I think it's watered down. Kind of like many Europeans say ca Cafe Americana is. Too much water. Okay, just really, because they, because for some reason, and I can't tell you why, I don't know Martin Scorsese, but Martin Scorsese, for some reason, wanted a three-hour film. And here's why I think it's Martin, all right, and not, I can't imagine it was producers, but, you know, Martin Scorsese is a powerhouse. He's a superpower in the film industry. Would you agree? And so when he says something, I think a lot of people go, yes, yes. But he has one of the best editors in history, if not the best, the best editors in history. And um, um, let me just, Killers of the Flower Moon. Somebody just asked me a question. Uh, and the only reason I put it on here is because it pertains to what I'm saying to you right now. Um, uh, uh, let me get my thoughts back. Okay, so what was I saying? You've got Martin Scorsese, and then you've got one of the best editors, if not the best editor. That is a matter of opinion. I get that. But my husband uh, is a filmmaker and an editor, retired, and he worships this woman, Thelma, Thelma Schoonmaker, S-C-H-O-O-N-M-A-K-E-R. So it could be Schoonmaker, forgive me, Thelma, if I'm pronouncing it wrong. But Thelma Schoonmaker, uh, Mocker, she is incredible editor and an incredible editor. My husband just thinks... Uh, this woman's fingers are golden when it comes to editing. So when we watched Killers of the Flower Moon, we felt like, honestly, we felt like Martin Scorsese told her no. We believe that Thelma looked at Martin while editing the film and saying, you know, this would have more snap. The message would be more clear, more intense, and affect the audience more if we cut out about 40 minutes of it. We made it a two hour and 20 minute movie, you see? And that's what we felt like while watching the picture. We just felt like going the full three hours. Now, many theater goers told you they had a different thing in mind. Like I am needing to find a place where I can, you know, get to the restroom. And so my mind isn't on the movie there either if they're in a theater. But I think more importantly that even if you had, uh, you know, not drink anything during the movie. You could watch the full three hours without nonstop. I think it's still watered down. And uh, my husband feels the same. We feel like the message that was so strong becomes watered down because there are scenes in there that are that are just too, too fluffy, for lack of a better word. There's just a lot of space that doesn't need to be there. And it doesn't create that emotion in us. It actually dissipates the emotion in us for us. I'm saying for me, okay, uh, that I would have enjoyed had they, it been a tighter film. And because Thelma was at the helm, I can only think that Martin Scorsese, and this is my theory, uh, but I think Martin Scorsese actually probably told her no. She said, look, Martin, this would be so much more impactful if it was tighter. And I think he just said, no, I want it the way it is, you know, poof, done. And because he's the director, he has the final say. So there it is. Now, it could be when a director doesn't have the final say, sometimes it's the producers that have the final say. But this is Martin Scorsese. I just have that. I have trouble believing that. If you're Martin Scorsese and you're listening to this, one of the two or three people, <laughs> that are listening to this, please uh, chime in and let me know uh, if your hands were tied as well, because uh, this really feels like a movie where people's hands were tied and that it could have been so much more, in my opinion, than it was. So Killers of the Flower Moon, I really feel like it was a film that um, was, uh, you know, just too long, just too long and not necessarily too long. There are movies that were good that, 
were unnecessarily too long. A lot of people, I think Titanic could be a little bit shorter, but there's a lot of you out there that say, I didn't feel that four hours. I'm sorry, I didn't feel it. And so many of you say it just flows and it just goes. And uh, uh, I got to tell you, I didn't start feeling it till after about the three hour, 10 minute mark. So you went three hours. You, I got to agree with you. Okay. So there are movies that can be long that I'm cool with. Not It's not the length that bothers me. It's the story. And I just feel like they could have tightened this one up. By any means, it's one you should see. Absolutely. I'm not going to say don't see it because it is a good film. It's a very good film, but it's Scorsese. You know, come on. Not that he did, he couldn't do a dog, but he's very good. So, so you can kind of, you can kind of rest assured that if Martin Scorsese is attached to it, it's going to be a good film. So it's good. It's really good. Um, Let's pull out the the uh, odd movie in the room, and that's Poor Things. If you watch the previews to Poor Things, I've got to give you a warning. Preview doesn't tell you anything about that movie. Let me say it again. Preview tells you nothing about that film. Do not take your children to see it, okay? Do not take your children to see it. Uh, go screen it first. And then if you think uh, young people under the age of, of, of 18, maybe under the age of 16, uh, but I think under the age of 18 is a good benchmark, um, you know, 17 and under, uh, who will probably go see what they want to go see if they're older. But my point is this, screen it first as a parent, okay? Because you may come back going, wow, that was not what I expected. And a lot of people, that's what they say, including yours truly. Did I like the film? I'll tell you what I did like about the film. It's a different telling of the Frankenstein story. If you liked Frankenstein, the original Frankenstein, it's not going to be linear in any way with Frankenstein. But I say it's kind of like Frankenstein meets a racer head. Uh, it, and if you don't know what a racer head is... Uh, it's it's a movie that's really out there. And that's what Poor Things is. It's really out there. So um, it would be best if you could screen it. Um, big screen. If you're someone that likes these odd, unusual, weird movies like Brazil, uh, Terry Gilliam's film, um, you could be fine with it. Okay? It could be something. But I just don't want you to think it's the happy-go-lucky upbeat that Poor Things seems to be. Uh, depicting, there are some scenes they cannot depict. Um, and uh, for very important reasons. So um, please screen it first um, and stream it so that if it's something that you, that you find distasteful, you can stop it. Okay. You don't want to be trapped inside a movie theater and then realize this is just not the film you expected to see. Okay. It is, um, the dark horse, the red herring, the unusual film of the year, very unusual, very different. And, uh, it's not something I'd show to my mother. All right. Just so you know. And, uh, uh, it, it, that's all I can tell you. I don't want to spoil it for you, but, uh, I, the jury's still out with me when I see it. I, I can't tell you there were sections that I liked. There were sections that were intriguing. And then there were sections that I thought, Ugh. so for me, it's a big question mark, but uh, this is the one that the Academy picked that shows you they're not uh, stiff shirted too much starch in their collar people. They have a really open mind. When you look at that one, I'm going to tell you that one that one is, is a matter of taste. It's a matter of taste. And if you have something you want to share with me on that, um, what you think about it without doing spoilers, because this is just to help you decide, do you want to go see it? Do you want to wait till it streams? You know, what do I watch now? Right. And, uh, let me see holdovers. If you love, uh, Paul Giamatti, he's amazing and still is amazing. I started to tell you about Oppenheimer. I think Oppen Oppenheimer has some of the strongest acting chops I've seen in a while. 
So I think Cillian is amazing in the title role. And I also think the one who is going to really surprise you is Robert Downey Jr. Um, I think he's going to nail it. But he does have competition. There are some actors in that category that are really, really good. And I mean, isn't that the time you should win? I mean, thank goodness you were nominated and acknowledged. But if you're up against some heavy hazers, as is the Becta actor and actress category this year, uh, actor in a female role, actor in a male role, more words. Honestly, I think you're overthinking it, but that's me. Uh, in any case, uh, these are strong, strong performances across the board in that movie and uh, very just, yeah. The one that I found that I wasn't really able to bite into and really follow why it was a Best Picture nomination is Past Lives. That's just something that I watched and went, eh, especially compared to the other nine. Um, maybe they needed a tenth. But if it's something that intrigues you and it's something that you like, uh, go ahead and tell me, you know, why you thought it it warrants best picture. Because for me, I just kind of looked at it and went, no, you know. Um, yes, I'm live live. Sorry about that. I know on Fridays, many of you think that I'm recorded live today. I decided to go live live because I thought this was important. So thank you, Joe, for saying, oh, yeah, I guess I should have said I'm live live. Um, not pre-recorded live. A lot of times I try to tell you when I'm pre-recorded, but today I'm live live. Yes, I'm live live. I'm going to be live live for the next few minutes here. And then I'm going to be gone, gone. <laughs> but I just thought it was important as we get closer and closer. The SAG Awards are February 24th and then followed closely by the Academy Awards. And I just thought it would be, um, if you're trying to see these movies, if you're someone like me who tries to see all the movies and everything, I just thought it would be nice to tell you about the movies. The other one that I think is very interesting is American fiction. Now, this one, I want to caution you if you're a writer. If you're a writer trying to get something, let me say that again, wrong words. If you're a writer looking to be published and you found challenges being published, this movie may not make you feel better. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I have a lovely best friend and she has been working very hard to get published and her work is excellent. But like our lead character in American fiction, she's challenged as he is. And uh, there are some things in this movie that are very, very funny. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good film, a very good film. I think it warrants a nomination. But if you're a writer and you've been struggling, you may not find it entertaining. That is something that you are going to have to judge for yourself. So that's my caution. Um, if you're someone who doesn't write, if you're someone who's not been trying working to get published, uh, it, you're probably going to be okay. <laughs> but all I could do is think of my best friend and how this just could make her angrier or more upset. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say about that movie. But uh, that's my caution on that movie. Maestro, I had a little trouble with the makeup and also the lead actor is also the director. This can only work in certain situations and in many times is very, very difficult for the actor to bring it. Um, one of the exceptions is Braveheart, where Mel Gibson was actor and director and he said it nearly killed him. It, he also said that it taught him to do less takes as an actor, get it in less takes because it was more of a survival for him during Braveheart, but the movie's incredible. But uh, a lot of times when an actor directs themselves, they can't be, what's the word? They can't be objective. And uh, in this one, I think there's some areas that they could have done a little differently. And also uh, the makeup he he sounds often like he has a cold in his nose, and that was a little distracting for me. But that, uh, other than that, um, it was nice to hear about the life. Uh, it was very interesting. So honestly, um, there we go. So I've gone through a lot of them. Anatomy of a Fall, foreign film, also very interesting. Also very chilling. Um, I'm telling you, it's an eclectic group this year. 
And so I think that the Academy needs to have a little bit of kudos for being a little more diverse because sometimes they can be very, very uh, narrow-minded. And in the past, I know that many of you, that's exactly the way you felt about some of the films that you love. And of course, if you love certain films that are more fantasy-based and stuff like that, you may feel the same here. But uh, Barbie is one that is very strong and it made in the tin. And I think that's great. I also have to acknowledge them for uh, the effects films because they gave an effects nod to Godzilla minus zero. And if you haven't seen this film and you love Godzilla like me, um, you got to see this movie. Now, it may not be in theaters anymore. Last week, I think, my it came across my feed that Godzilla was going to be pulled from theaters. And I thought it was only Godzilla minus zero minus color was going to be pulled and the color one was going to stay because it doesn't seem very productive to in this next few weeks, not have these movies accessible for you to see because the Academy Awards are coming. You may remember last year that Guillermo del Toro did a marvelous little film that ended up winning uh, in its category for uh, Pinocchio. And that is because Guillermo what made himself available and made the movie available for everyone, almost, if not right up to the Academy Awards. This is what you've got to do, okay? Because many Academy members have a huge amount of films they have to see. And so if you believe in your film, you've got to fight and market your film. You've got to get out there and let people see your film and understand why you made it and understand why it's important to see it. Do you follow me? So to pull, and I am not saying Godzilla minus one, minus color or minus one, let's just say minus one. They pulled it. They may have had no other choice, but having to pull it. And, uh, but I'm hoping that they'll bring it back before, uh, the Academy Awards. So those of you who want to see it will get to see it because it's incredible. It's incredible. If you didn't get to see it, I hope you get to see it because it's really, really good. And if for any reason it doesn't get to be seen before the Academy Awards, then hopefully it will come out and I'm praying for a DVD because I really want it. Um, it's it's amazing. And I'm a Godzilla fan. So maybe my my love of it doesn't count, but I think it does because as a Godzilla follower, the love of Godzilla. I've always loved the original. And this one has throwbacks to the original, has love of the original without making it the original. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Godzilla people. Um, I just got to tell you, it is a wonderful film to watch. And uh, if you haven't seen it, um, see it as soon as you can. Right now, it I don't think it's available. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. If, the, if you know where you can see it, then please post it here so people can see it because it's really, really, really brilliant. And I'm grateful to the Academy who nine times out of 10 is thought of as being stiff shirts, too much starch in the collar. People voted and this one made it. Okay. The voting process for both Screen Actors Guild and the Academy of Motion Pictures isn't easy. All right. These 10 films. We're not just like, you know, spin the wheel and throw a dart at the spinning board. It was really well thought out, I feel. And it's difficult because there's so many others that may have been left on the table. Directors left, not spoken for in the nominations. Uh, that should have been. But it's still a hard thing to do. And so um, if you if you want to be like the old days where you're an actor and the age your agent does all the work, you're not going to get a lot of jobs. You got to be a team player with your agent and you work together on this. In my case, I'm always looking at what trades I can and reaching out to my agent when I can. Lately, I haven't because I've been this, I've been in a different mindset. But uh, when I do, when I get down in the trenches with my agent, I get way more auditions and a lot more consideration. I've just had a year and many have had a year. So just consider it a small hiatus. And then after tomorrow, hopefully I can get back in the trenches and talk to my agent and we can figure out what our next plan of attack is going to be. But the point is this, it need, you need to be front of mind. And with 10 movies, you got to get 
front of mind. Okay. Uh, as I wrap up, and then I'll look at your comments, but as I wrap up, and we've gone just over 30 minutes, uh, I will tell you that um, I I went crazy over Annette Benning and uh, uh, Jodie Foster in Nyad. Uh, oddly enough, it wasn't a Best Picture nomination, but boy, these two women tear it up. And there are several things in Nyad that I absolutely adore. The story of a woman who did this long swim from uh, Cuba to Florida, right? Not Florida to Cuba, Cuba to Florida, through infested waters with all kinds of creepy things. Um, you got to watch it. It's really good. But these women are uh, over 50 years old. And the reason I point this out is because many of you have maybe heard people say that a woman is washed up after 50. And we know this not to be true. Okay. We have seen, well, I mean, many actresses may believe this, but many actors have proven that this is not the case. Many female actors have proven this is not the case. These two being two of them. All right. You also have your Lily Tomlin, your Jane Fonda. Jane is still trying to look younger and that's a different story, but she's over 50 and uh, Lily Tomlin is over 50. She's doing a great job. Dom Judy Dench, amazing. Uh, the actors, many actors in The Crown on TV, many actors. So, so my point is this, don't pick up that book. Don't believe that women over 50 are washed up as actors because this is a perfect example of no, they're not, All right? And in many of those films, no, they're not. Some very, very strong performances that you must see. Okay, so Nyad is one. I'm just going to say to you, uh, I'm going to pull it out and tell you, yeah, you need to see this film. Um, and it'll get you. It's, it's, I was amazed. I had heard about um, this swimmer, but I hadn't really followed her. I, I was young at the time and uh, into science fiction, like I still am and into fantasy and horror films and Star Wars -y type stuff. So I didn't really follow. I mean, I heard her on the news and I, uh, I, I, it was really great to have a movie like this that kind of helps you realize what it took for this swimmer to do what she did. So uh, check it out. I think it's awesome. Um, another one I want to pull out that didn't get a best picture nod, but I think it's very important is, uh, Coleman Domingo in Rustin. Okay. This movie I thought was so compelling. And I often tell the people on my Patreon page, uh, this is so compelling. The tribe, Terry's tribe. I often tell Terry's tribe when I'm talking to them privately. And if you want to be a part of Terry's tribe, just go to, um, whoops. What did I just do here? I'm terrible. Sometimes I just mess stuff up, but I fixed it. <laughs> Me and technology. Go to patreon.com slash Terry Harden and learn how you can be a part of this elite group, uh, this elite community of people that help each other. We talk about all kinds of things a lot deeper than what I'm doing now, but I just thought this was important, which is why I'm chatting with you today about it. This is a very important, uh, I just think it'd be nice to have someone look through without telling you I liked it. I didn't like it. Here's something that I, you know, just tell you this one, this was a little, that one, yeah. but that kind of helps you to understand the ones that I would see first. They're all really good. But if you want to be a part of my Patreon page, part of Terry's tribe, go here. It's $5 a month. Very, very simple, easy, no problem. And uh, test it out, dip a toe in the water and see what you think. Okay. Um, there's, you know, that's the thing is that uh, being a part of this group is really, really special. And I'm very, very thankful. But we were talking about that documentaries are different from a movie, aren't they? And many people will get angry. One of the ones that uh, comes to mind is Bohemian Rhapsody, where the calendar in Bohemian Rhapsody, which I thought was a brilliant film, by the way, uh, Bohe in the calendar in Bohemian Rhapsody is fussed with. They kind of move the timeline around. This is because it's a movie, folks, and you've got to make the movie compelling because your goal, even if you don't even realize it as a movie maker, is to get people to pick up the book and read the book. If there's a book involved or read about that person, 
read the Wikipedia page, read about the person after you've seen the movie, the film, right? And so if you do that, this is your success, I think. Um, one of them is Trumbo uh, with Cranston. I had known about uh, the McCarthy area era and uh, the blacklist, but I had never experienced it. I was too young. So I picked up Trumbo book. It's not that thick and it's really good. It's really, really good. And it actually, because it's a book, unfolds for you the true story in the chronology that you like, but you can start to see how the movie maker omitted what they felt was good because they were saying, I got about two hours. I don't have, you know, as long as it takes you to read this book. I mean, can you imagine this Rustin that I'm talking about, okay, is amazing. It's about Bayard Rustin. Here's the book because this movie made me get the book. But can you imagine trying to do a movie when the book is this fat? This is not a two-hour film here. So you as a filmmaker have to take the pearls that you're going to do, make an interesting film that is compelling, that gets you, which it got me, and then they buy the book, which I bought the book because I want to read the book and learn about this man. So I think it's a book you need to see. Will he win Best Actor? I don't know, uh, but he's very, very excellent. He is a good actor, and I want him to know. Uh, Coleman, I want you to know that you are in, uh, you deserve to be. I, this is why I like the nominations a little better than the award, because I know that, you know, if you're in it, it's a lot different. And I've never been nominated for an Academy Award. Um, but I will say that I really believe that if your peers acknowledge that your performance is Academy worthy, that's the win. And you may think I'm giving you lip service, but I really believe that. Because the statue is the cherry on the cake. You've got the cake. But the cherry on the cake has got to be uh, the Academy Award, of course. But I can imagine when you win it, you're kind of like, wow, I got to share it with the others because I saw the others and they're amazing. And that's not just the actor standing on stage giving them lip service. They mean it. Because if you actually watch these films, um, they're really, really good. Um, they're really, really amazing. But... Uh, He's got a few in there that are pretty strong contenders. So uh, he's a strong contender and they are Cillian and Oppenheimer. Wow. You know, uh, amazing. Um, but across the board, guys, every single one of these people are worth watching and those films are amazing. And uh, But this one here made me buy the book. Okay? I'm just saying. it was It's powerful. It's such a powerful film. Very good. And the book is uh, filling in the blanks because in a movie, they can't. So one of my favorite movies, um, um, a few years back, is Hacksaw Ridge. And when I told people I love this movie, people, including my sister, went, what is the matter with you? Uh, but then they watched the whole movie and it, it just got you, okay? Uh, it is an amazing film. And I then later, after watching the film a million, a bunch, a bunch of times, uh, I watched it again and I decided I wanted to get the book. And uh, I got COVID in 2021, I believe. I got COVID for the first time and I isolated myself from my husband. And I got to read five books in a row. It was probably the good part of having COVID. But uh, one of the books I read, was Hacksaw Ridge. It wasn't very thick. Um, wasn't very thick at all. But it was uh, it was very enlightening because there's a lot of things about this person that were not in the movie. And I really felt that the person who, who pulled from the book did a great job because the movie is incredible. And now it made me buy the book and I read the book and I got the, the whole story. Uh, and it was, I like the book too, you see? So um, I got the whole story. So understand that a movie means the movie the way I see it. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. You don't like that person's interpretation. Remember, I told you about poor things. It is out there, guys, and it might not be to the taste of many of you. I'm still on the fence about it, honestly. I'm not quite sure what I think. Uh, I'm somebody who needs to see a movie a couple of times. Uh, but many of you are going to fall in love with it and go, wow, that was great. 
You know, something about the Academy made them make it one of the top 10. And I think one of the things is Willem Dafoe, who always delivers. Um, a very, very unusual role for Paul Ruffalo. I actually found him very compelling. Um, but mm, the movie itself, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Just approach with caution, okay? Be ready. If you fall in love with it or you love it, tell me why. And don't make spoilers, though, okay, guys? Just know that the previews cannot show you what the movie truly is about, all right? It can't. And that's all I'm going to say. They are restricted. They cannot show you what it's really about. They cannot show you some of the images that are in there. And it's not that this is bad. It is just restricted. You follow me? Good. Good. Okay. So uh, I've said it. Um, yeah. I think there's some strong performances across the board. And I think you need to take a look. I hope this has helped you with uh, the Academy Awards. One more thing I want to say, and that is about the documentaries. Let me get to those. And animation. I'm still I'm still watching animation and uh, I'm loving, I'm I'm wanting to get all the animation. It's a little more challenging for me because I'm not an animator, but uh, the Academy sometimes has screenings of all the animated films and the short subjects and the documentaries. Sometimes they'll do that. So uh, in fact, I think somebody from my tribe said that they're doing it. I just, I have to get through tomorrow and then I will see. I may have missed out. I hope not. But I got to get through tomorrow in order to see if I can see some of these things because I really like to watch everything. And then I um, vote, even though my vote doesn't count in the Academy. It does count for the Screen Actors Guild. So, um, but anyway, they don't do... Um, they don't do a uh, documentary feature and uh, they don't do, um, they don't do documentary feature. I'm reading um, best animated short. Um, I'm not a part of that. So I've got to find those. I'd like to watch the animated short subjects, live action short. I would love to see. I'm being told some of them are streaming. So I'll have to go through kind of, kind of, but the best documentary short is what I want to bring to your attention. If you have Disney Plus, and many of you do, because a lot of times we talk Disney here, and you're always giving me tips on what to see, I want to wrap up with this, and then I'll look at your comments, okay? Uh, but I want to wrap up with this, and that is, if you have not yet seen The Last Repair Shop, which is on Disney Plus, please go see it. It is remarkable. It is unbelievable and so wonderful. Check it out. It is streaming on Disney Plus. Go, go, go. Called The Last Repair Shop. Do not miss it. Okay? Promise me. Promise me you'll go see this. This is something that I tripped over and it was amazing. So, uh, so there you have it. Let's see what you have to say. And then I'm gonna dart out of here for a while. Okay. Bob Lineweaver. Hello, Bob. I still have a plane for you. So we need to talk about that after the 10th. Yes. Um, I know that's a weird message, but I thought I'd say it. Uh, and Joe says you're live, live, not pre-recorded live. Yes, I'm live, live. And for those of you who, uh, you know, I know it's a little sparse today. Many of you will watch me after the live and realize I'm live. I'll try next time to tell you when I'm going to be live, live. Okay. The Fridays are touch and go because I'm testing something out and, um, you may or may not like it, but if you want me live all the time, patreon.com slash Terry Harden, that's the one thing that makes the difference. I'm going to try and give you more content on both of these uh, platforms, but that's going to take a little time. And uh, there you go. How am I today? Thank you, Mike. I am hanging in there. I find myself getting a little nervous. Tomorrow is my dad's celebration of life. And so I know I don't need to be nervous, but you know how emotions are. They just do what they do, don't they? Um, Joe says, uh, 10 movies for best picture is a mess when all other awards are limited to five nominations. They should change it back to just five. And this has been an opinion of many people, Joe. Uh, 
However, when it was five, and I have been watching the Academy Awards, and I'm not saying you haven't, I've been watching the Academy Awards nonstop since I was three years old. Uh, it is my favorite award show, even when it's terrible. I can remember back in the day when they made Snow White sexy and she danced through the aisle as a sexy character and I just didn't understand. And later Disney really dinged him for that. Oh, I don't remember what year that was, but that was really unbelievable. The year the, the Academy Awards had a streaker. Very, yeah. So lots happened. I mean, besides picking pictures. And they did have five. But the problem was they kept getting a lot of flack for only choosing five. And it real they finally went with 10 because they just kept getting dissed for doing five. They felt that for pictures, they should have 10 opportunities. I just think, what's my opinion? I'm sure you're sitting there saying, well, but Terry, what's your opinion, girl? You know, are you dodging it? No, I'm not dodging it. Uh, I think that... 10, movie, 10 movies is confusing. I think you got to stick with five. So I agree with you, Joe Penny, because uh, I realize there's my table at an event where I you get to come and meet me and buy some of my sculptures and some of my photos, et cetera, et cetera. When my table is too cluttered, uh, people go, they, they tilt because it's too much to look at. It's too much to decide on. So I think this might be the case for this. We'll see. But, um, and I haven't really looked at the stats. Joe, you may have looked at the stats on when a best picture has been nominated when um, when um, best director, best actress have not been from that movie. I know it exists because because I remember there was a movie that didn't get best director, but it got best picture. And you're kind of like, what? And now they want to add the Academy Awards is talking about adding casting category to it, which I think is very, very important. But again, that's a lot for people to kind of digest. So, you know, the jury is out on that one, but. I agree with you. I think five and five. It's harder with five. And I think that's why they went to 10. But it is challenging. You know, what if the movie wins best picture and it didn't win best actor, actress or director, but it wins best picture? Has that happened? Because if it hasn't, you could narrow it down to five, couldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. I haven't done that. I haven't dug that deep. But it's a really good point. Uh, speaking of older actresses, 65-year-old Michelle Pfeiffer reportedly in talks to play the lead in Yellowstone sequel series, pos po get up with that. possibly without Matthew McConaughey since he's asking for a lot of money. Matthew McConaughey is, um, you've got other Western people that will work good. Um, you know, in Yellowstone, if Kevin Costner is your challenge, um, and I love Yellowstone, I'm a big fan of Yellowstone, uh, I actually like the man who uh, uh, is actually a cowboy guy. He's the writer of Yellowstone and was also the writer of, what was it that I used to watch? Anyway, um, he's really good. He's really incredible. I love the man very much. I love watching him because I can feel real cowboy in him. Okay. Uh, and this is what I think about it. One of the things that Yellowstone made me happy about was that I was watching actual rodeo people. And I love watching the real thing. Not that actors can't do it because I like it peppered with actors and real rodeo people. I think that's what really made Yellowstone so compelling. But I honestly don't think you need a, a lead guy in the role. I don't know what the movie's going to be like, but I don't think you need lead people. If you feel that that's going to help your budget better, which many will say, it's the budget. I need I need a name. I don't know if Matthew is that name. So if he's asking for money, keep looking. Keep looking. You know, that's my opinion. <laughs> Just keep looking. Because <laughs> there's some great people out there uh, that could do a really good job. And, you know, Matthew doesn't hold all the cards. So in my opinion, keep looking. Joe says, we already know that the animation Oscar is going to uh, Miyazaki, the boy and the heron. Well, I would like to think so. I haven't seen it yet, but, but, uh, this man does deliver. He does deliver, doesn't he? And, uh, many of you have seen it and said, it's really, really good. But again, like I said before, Joe, if you are nominated in that category, your peers think you are Academy Award worthy. And to me, I think that's the win. The cherry on the cake goes to that. Maybe you should be and the cherry on the cake goes to, do you know what I mean? That's the way I feel. 
I really, really feel you do get a certificate that says you're a nom you're you were a nominee when you're nominated for the Academy Awards. You do get a certificate, and I got to tell you, there are a lot of films. You know, there are a lot of films. When I was on the nomination committee for the Screen Actors Guild, I saw over 600 films. I didn't have to, but I did. And many of those never saw the light of day in the nominations. So understand this is a big undertaking. So if you're out there and you are nominated, uh, celebrate. Celebrate that you were nominated because the cherry on the cake is wonderful. I am not saying it's not, but the cherry on the cake uh, is just that. It's that extra added acknowledgement. Um, but honestly, I just think if you're, I think your peers telling you that they think you were in the top five is choice, guys. I think that's amazing. I would be beside myself if that ever happened to me, if I was an actor and someone acknowledged my performance and they were actors. Oh, that's why I like the Screen Actors Guild because it's actors nominating and voting for actors. And I love being able to, to be a part of it. And I take it very seriously. I don't just phone it in. It's very important. I'm not saying that people do, but it's a lot of films to watch. You know, today on the Patreon page, one young lady says, I can't sit still that long, you know, but I had to, and um, I have, and I've watched everything. So I'm ready to vote now. Yeah. Every single one. Start to finish, start to finish, start to finish. Cause there's some TV series in there that I wanted to make sure I gave them the full, the full thing. So there you go. Not everyone's going to be like me, um, but I just really take it seriously because I know if I were in that position, I would like you to consider me. Even if you didn't even know who I was, I'd like you to consider me because there's a couple of people. It's their first nomination ever. And uh, did we hear about them before? Mm, maybe, maybe not. So it's important. If they make that top five, it's important. Yep, it is. Animas animation feature, at least. I understand that. Yes. And I agree with you. Maybe you will. But like I said, icing on the cake. It's icy. It's the cherry on the cake. You've got the cake. It's a cherry on the cake. Okay, please don't don't let it. I know that emotionally you'll be very sad if you you do not win, you know, the big the golden statue. But my goodness, it sure makes people aware of you, especially if it's your very first time being nominated. <laughs> makes people aware of you. You know, uh, who is that? Let me research that. Let me read about that. You know, let me check that out. Let me buy the book. I'm just saying, let me buy the book. Mission accomplished, oh, actor who made me emotionally connected to what you were going through in your film. Yep. Yep. Let's see. Uh, oh, I sent a, you a video on Messenger about streaming on Facebook that you'll want to show Lindsay. Yes, I saw that. And I did show him. So we'll get better at a lot of this stuff. Not now, after the 10th. He knows no new stuff till after tomorrow. And no new stuff until the 12th, actually. Because the 11th, when many people will be watching the Super Bowl, I will be asleep. Because this has been, I can't tell you what this ride has been. It has been something that, yeah, I'm not going to get into it. I've gotten into it a lot and maybe so many of you are bored that I'm talking about this, but uh, honestly, yeah, after the 10th. So thank you for that, Joe. Um, but after the 10th, yeah, yeah. Um, Taylor Sheridan, co-creator of Yellowstone. He participates in reigning horse and cutting horse competitions. He just started directing his latest series for Paramount Plus, Landman, starring Billy Bob Thornton. Have you heard anything about it? I'm there. Um, I love Billy Bob Thornton. I think he's one of the most underrated actors of our time. I just, Sling Blade blows me away because I can't see Billy Bob Thornton in that character at all. And I'm looking. Uh, I don't see him in there and I find it amazing. And then um, Taylor is just phenomenal. But that's because he's the real deal. I like watching the real deal. I mean, it doesn't have to be all the real deal because I don't think all the real deal works. I think when you mix it like a fine recipe of actors with real people, you get a dynamic that you cannot um, get if you have other, I just think a real person in there makes it neat, makes it cool. 
at least as a technical advisor, but Taylor has just been someone who in his under Taylor just is Taylor. And it's really great to watch Taylor be Taylor. Just really laid back, but direct and knows his stuff. And just wow, I'll tell you, he's the reason. And the woman who plays the daughter in Yellowstone, those are the two reasons I watched the series. Those are the two people that got me. And it was a Screen Actors Guild nomination that made me see it in the first place. I saw season four before I saw any other season. But Yellowstone just grabbed me. Yeah. Wow. Ha! Huh. Whoa! What a series. Yeah. I'm sorry that there was a problem. Um, but I'm I'm looking forward to this one, Joe. Thank you for sharing with it. Me. Also, second stop in the Texas swing just started last night. San Diego and the San Antonio stock show and rodeo running until February 24th. Can you see Joe's into this? Yeah, he's very into this. And this is what I'm talking about, guys. Uh, speak and let me know because uh, I can't know everything, right? How's my mom doing? She's doing just fine. And it is now over an hour. So I am going to say adieu. I hope you have a lovely, incredible, fabulous weekend. And uh, thank you for joining me. I know I was a bit late today. Uh, I'm still in my crazy week. And so hopefully I'm going to be a little more on point as the months develop after tomorrow. And uh, we'll see. <laughs> I cannot predict the future. Um, remember, to, uh, yesterday is history. Tomorrow's a mystery. But today is a gift. That's why it's called The Present. Kung Fu Panda 1, one of my favorite movies of all time. If you haven't seen it, see it. If you haven't seen it in a while, see it. It's not up for any awards. It's just fabulous. It was up during its time. But it is a movie that helps me feel better. And I think it's good for everyone to remember. This is a time when you got to just put one foot in front of the other. And if that's you, know that I'm with you. I've got your back. One foot in front of the other. And soon you'll be dancing across the floor. Uh, Chris Kringle. Um, Rankin Bass. So guys, uh, have a good day. Do something nice for someone else. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. And, uh, the last comment of the day is have a great weekend and enjoy the sunshine because we've got it sunshine in California for at least another five days. Isn't that nice? A chance to dry out. Those of you who are in uh, difficult areas, be careful because drying out can still mean landslides. So heads up, watch out for potholes and uh, know that I care about you deeply and I will see you on Monday. It will probably be a short one on Monday um, because I have a birthday party to go to, but uh, I'll at least pop in and say hello. Okay. All right, guys, be good, be wonderful, be safe. And